New York City, a home to over 8 million people looking for love, lust, and everything in between. As a somewhat attractive 26-year-old living in Brooklyn, it's not so hard to get a date. Now securing a partner, that's another story. The New York City dating scene is infamous for commitment phobes, toxic bachelors, and hopeless romantics. Three decades later and all the tropes from Sex in the City remain the same, the same questions persist. How can there be so many beautiful, talented, successful women who can't secure a man? Have dating apps really ruined dating or have men always been this way? Is the situationship a product of online culture or is it a tale as old as time? This is what I'm going to be finding out. And unlike Carrie, I won't be chain smoking inside my apartment every time a man wrongs me. I'm currently on two dating apps, Bumble and Raya. The former Sadie Hawkins style where the woman needs to make the first move. And the latter for F-less socialites who have $25 a month to spend on superficial swiping. If you see an ad on this video, please click it so I can afford my Raya membership. As someone who has been burned by the New York City dating scene, I've become bitter. But with this series, I hope to bring a breath of optimism and excitement back into my dating life. I have a first date tonight and this was a very last minute planned like I only decided to go on this date about five hours ago but we're rolling with it so I met this guy on Bumble he is 6'1 <laughs> very muscular and buff which is not usually the type I go for I'm usually into the lanky half dead looking one so this is new <laughs> I don't know if you already saw this but I just got this sun tattoo done two days ago and I am obsessed with it I think it looks so cool so for my opening line I said we should get matching tattoos on our first date he said only if we're madly in love so I responded back and said so our second date then and after that he asked me what I was doing tonight and if I wanted to go out so here we are getting ready for my first date he asked for my Instagram but I didn't give it to him for obvious reasons sometimes I like when the guys are open and honest about knowing my social media but sometimes I think it can scare them so we're gonna start going in with a normal first date and see how that, that goes speak of the devil he just sent me a message so let's pray he's not canceling on me an hour beforehand still on for tonight and I'm heading home ah! we're still on babe we are still on I like that he checked in though that that is something I would do he did share his Instagram with me and so I took a little look and he is in a band which I know I know you all warn me about musicians he plays bass which I feel like is the least insufferable instrument but I'm excited. I love music, so I feel like we'll connect on that. And he likes rock, indie stuff, so that'll be great. That's what I like, too. I've done a really last-minute, like, day of talking to someone for a date before, and they turn out really weird, so I'm hoping that's not the case with this guy. I don't think it will be, but sometimes when you're sporadic, it can bite you in the butt. Personally, I prefer the least amount of texting as possible. I'd rather just meet you in person and see if we click. And the more I text with someone, the more I, like, work myself up in my head and reread the messages and just get a little crazy so i'd like to just meet them right off the bat so i don't get weird but yeah i'm excited to meet this guy i have to leave in like an hour but i'm not really feeling nervous i feel pretty good about things but i'm gonna have a glass of wine which will really help <laughs> yeah Sienna is also going on a first date. Tell the people. Tell the people what? This is my sex in the city, so this is perfect. We're like, my friend is like- Samantha Charlotte. <laughs> yes, Sienna is such a Charlotte. What are you doing? Only, only for dating, I would say. Like, I feel like- Yeah. Yeah. What are you doing for your date? Going to a bar, just like you. Exciting stuff. He did just push our date till 8.30 because of train delays, but completely believe him, New York trains are crazy, so. Pushing it back by 30 minutes just gives me more time to pick out my outfit. All right, all right. This is what we are working with for the first date outfit. I have my AS98 boots, which I love. And then I added my snake belt to my little baby doll dress to add a little bit more shape and make it shorter and then added this leather jacket on top in case I get chilly. I don't get nervous for first dates until it's like 10 minutes until I have to leave. So I'm feeling a little nauseous, but we're gonna power through and hopefully have some fun. Thursday night, August 22nd. Tonight, I have a last minute date from Bumble at Night of Joy in Williamsburg, a first date spot I frequent. First impressions are everything on first dates. Pushing the date back 30 minutes and then being 20 minutes late is a sure way to lose my interest. 
When he finally did arrive, he bought me another drink and we sat on the rooftop patio. We covered the usual first date topics, but after 10 minutes, I knew this wasn't a connection. He was a nice guy, but there was nothing serious there for me. I cut the date short and headed to a drag show in Bushwick, which was loads of fun. So my night was saved after all. Good morning. <laughs> It is the next day, the next day after the date. Safe to say he wasn't the one. <laughs> okay, let's do a, a quick little recap. So I walked Sienna to her date first because we had some time to kill. And then I got to the bar I was supposed to go to about 10 minutes before the date. And Bestie was late. And he texted saying that he would be. So I suppose it's fine. But I ended up sitting alone for like 30 minutes, which I don't love that. The man should always be prompt. <laughs> Maybe that's a little fucking, I don't know, geriatric of me, but I like it when the guy is like there before me. So I ended up getting myself a drink at the bar and then he showed up. He's, he was cute. He was a cutie. Went to the bar and he got me another round and he got the same thing. We went up to the patio thing they have and it was actually super busy last night because it was someone's birthday party. I'm gonna be honest, guys. There just wasn't, for me personally, the chemistry was not chemistry mysterying. I found it hard to like maintain conversation with him and he wasn't asking me many deep questions about myself or like the conversation was just like thudding along and he's like a muscular dude so I was asking about his like workout stuff and he said he hadn't ate since two o'clock that day because he's doing this diet to try and get like shredded like that's crazy <laughs> you're drinking drinks whatever 9 p.m and you haven't ate since two like that sounds a little crazy if you ask me yeah i don't have many thoughts like he he was a nice person he was cute but the vibes just were not vibing for me so it's gonna be a pass <laughs> When he was late and I was waiting in the bar, my friend texted me about a Chapel Rowan Charlie XCX drag show and I checked the location and it was less than a mile away. And so I texted back and I was like, if this date doesn't go well, I'll be there. <laughs> so I cut the date a little bit early and that is a clear sign of me not really enjoying a date. We did have a little kiss and he was a great kisser. I'll give him that. I'll give him that. Anyway, ended up going to the Chapel Charlie XCX show. It was everything. I was living my best life. It was so much fun. But I'm a little tired this morning. That's how the date went. We might mutually ghost each other. I don't know. Not everyone can be a winner and that's totally fine. I still had fun last night, so that's what matters. So I will be re-entering my man-eater era. I've lived in the New York City dating scene long enough to see myself become the villain. It is so hard to be a lover girl in 2024. I'm someone with very big feelings and I lead with my heart in everything I do. But when that comes to dating men, that is a sure way for me to get played. It's always funny to me when people are shocked that I get ghosted so frequently. I think this is a result of dating app culture and also just living in New York City where there's millions of people and endless options. Everyone is always onto the next best thing or the next easiest thing. So if I put up a boundary and I'm like, hey, I'm looking for more long-term. Ooh, that is a quick way to get ghosted. I've got to a point where I'm just so tired of feeling like the one that is out of control. I'm hot, I'm killing it in my career, I'm passionate, I have endless friends and fulfillment in my life. And if you aren't adding anything to that, bye. On to the next. <laughs> we are going to keep it moving because getting a date is not hard for me. No more dusties. We are done with dusty men. There is a piece of me that feels sad to have to turn off this emotional side of myself. I feel like there's no genuine way I can date in these early stages without completely shutting my emotions off. Just three weeks ago, I had an awesome date. The chemistry was flying. He was promising so much. He said he'd bring me sushi when I got my IUD changed and was gonna bring me flowers next Date. completely ghosted me completely ghosted me you just can't trust men until they show up with time and consistency and unfortunately i just need to rewire my brain to think a way a man does and think about myself 
only. I think a lot of like TikTok dating advice can be super toxic, but there is this woman I love. She is the sprinkle sprinkle lady. I think her name is Shara Seven. I'll link her. And she's all about women standing in her power and manipulating the men to get what she wants, which honestly fucking icon, love that for her. She's super direct in her videos, which is something that I honestly need. Like someone needs to slap me around with reasons men are the way they are so I can hear them. So in this new man eater era, I'm just deciding not to care. If you ghost me on the apps, I don't care. If you ghost me in real life, I don't care. And the next man will be better, like on to the next. I don't have time to waste anymore giving a fuck about men who treat me poorly. <laughs> the truth of it all is all men want is sex point blank period and in new york it is not that hard to get it's something i've known in my soul but i just have to keep it in mind every time i'm on these dates like this man is probably lying to me this man is probably love bombing me right now to get in my pants like i just have to keep these things in mind on these dates so i stop getting played because i'm better than that I feel like a crazy red pill person right now but this is what dating in new york has turned me into i can imagine this is all sounding a little extreme but it's what i have to tell myself to stay sane and keep having fun whenever i go on a date and i'm attracted to a guy i always put him on a pedestal and put his needs above my own and that is what we are not doing anymore i think the more people that i go on dates with the less i will put people on a pedestal and the better i will get at handling rejection anywho i am going on a date tonight ah this man is 30 years old. Recently, I have dated guys my age or a year younger and talking wise, I typically vibe with them. Like they feel like a friend, like there's things we can relate on. But maturity wise, they are not there. They are, their mind is somewhere else, babe. So we are sticking to late twenties or thirties. I'm not here to be their mother. They should know how to date. They should know how to respectfully treat a woman and make her feel special. So we are going for the older men. His profile says he is six and he gives sort of skater boy energy. Some of his pictures, he has like shoulder length, long brown hair, and others it's cut shorter. So we'll see which energy he's giving. He's just visiting the city from Toronto. And there's just something about Canadian men that is so sexy to me. I don't know why. I don't know if it's the Justin Bieber of it all, but something in the Canadian air, especially Toronto, the guys are always so cute from there. Cause he's not from here. He asked where we should go. So I chose this little bar in my neighborhood, which is like the perfect romantic romantic people watching spot. I'm excited, but I'm not overly excited. Like there's nothing really hanging on this for me. So I'll get ready and show you all my outfit. Just got ready for the day and I'm about to leave in a second, but let me show you the outfit. I'm feeling very much bloated and I have for like the past two weeks. So I'm just gonna wear this stretchy dress. I feel like it's still sexy, but I'm very comfortable. And then I'm wearing my AS98 buckle boots, another comfort option. I'm not feeling nervous at all. I'm pretty excited, so let's do it. Sunday, August 25th, a romantic date at Hotel Del Mano. As I approached the bar, he was waiting for me. He looked a little bit like Hosier, and if you know anything about me, Hosier is my ultimate celebrity crush. Paul had long brown hair, wore silver jewelry. The date went well. He was soft-spoken and had a calm energy about him. I enjoyed our flirty banter and overall had a good time. I knew it was nothing serious since he lived in another country. So when he asked for a second date the next day, I obliged. Under normal circumstances, that would be moving too quick, but I figured what's the harm? As we spend more time together, things seem to change. He got increasingly emotional and needed lots of reassurance about how I felt about him and how we'd communicate once he went home to Canada. Everything was continuing to intensify and he stopped respecting my boundaries and wasn't taking no for an answer. This made me super uncomfortable, so I quickly had to end things. Hello. So, <laughs> some things have happened. Um, ended up going on two dates with this latest guy and I was having a good time and I was having fun, but he got really possessive towards the end and wasn't taking no for an answer, which like really upset me. And I told him, it doesn't feel like you're respecting me or my boundaries, so sort of crashed and burned a little bit. I'm like scared to even talk about this situation, so I'm not gonna go too much into detail, but was left with pretty pretty bad feelings about the whole interaction, which was a bummer because like we were getting along and he was fun to hang out with, but he was very emotional and 
I think he's still working on some mental health stuff, which is totally fine. But that led to him needing an exorbitant amount of validation from me that I was not prepared to give and told him I wasn't prepared to give. <laughs> May need a little bit of a break from dating. Maybe the sparkle sparkle method was too much. I wanted a guy obsessed with me, but not like this. <laughs> I think everything was just moving way too fast and I was having a hard time maintaining my boundaries of like needing space. I think my lesson learned from this interaction is that I need to take the time to have some text conversations with these people and really see if I'm interested in meeting them because usually these quicker turnaround ones have been a little catastrophic <laughs> it feels like like they've been messy and I am not enjoying that this was episode one of my dating diaries this is real this is how dating goes there's some intense emotional reactions and I'm continuing to learn about myself and my boundaries and what I'm looking for in a partner and what I'm not looking for. So we will continue on our journey. I might take a week or two weeks off just to recalibrate the system because this was a bit of a roller coaster. If you guys know the Street Hearts dating show, you might've seen them on TikTok or Reels. I should be going on that the second week of September. So I'll try and film some BTS for you. And my friend is actually seeing someone that she matched with on the show, so. Who knows? Could work out. Could work out if someone sets me up. Thanks so much for watching. If you are new here, please subscribe. I would love to have you around and I will see you guys next time. Bye losers.